Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new section of the course we are going to talk about user authentication. As you know, in our sample application, we already took care of authentication in our front-end. So as you can see, we are here currently logged in using Firebase UI and we are currently using here a user which is listed in Firebase Authentication. So if we switch back here to our console, we are going to see here in the Authentication tab of our Firebase console that we are indeed logged in here with the user, with this particular user ID in our frontend. So the login functionality is implemented using the Firebase UI library and the Angular Fire SDK. Our users are logged in in our frontend using the login screen, which is implemented via the login component. As we can see, we have access here to the Angular Fire of injectable service from Angular Fire that allows us to perform the most commonly authentication related operations, such as logging in user and logging it out. Now, how does this library and how does Firebase authentication in general work? Well, whenever we want to authenticate a user, this library here is going to allow us via the Firebase UI library to make a request to the Firebase authentication backend where the combination of user and password is going to be validated. Either that or we are going to be redirected to the correct social login provider such as Google, Twitter, Facebook, etc. In either case, the Firebase authentication service is going to validate that the user is correctly logged in and it's going to give back to our frontend a JSON web token containing the identity of the user. It's that JSON web token that allows us, for example, to display here the user profile in our frontend. Now, in a similar way, in our Node Express backend that we are building, we also want to ensure user authentication for most of our routes. For example, the checkout route that is getting called whenever we click here on the Buy Course button is a route that is used to initialize a Stripe checkout session. So it's the type of backend functionality that we only want to make available to logged in correctly authenticated users. We want to make sure which user started the checkout session so that when the payment is completed, we know to which user to grant access to a given course, for example. So as you can see, in order to be able to implement this backend service correctly, we need to do user authentication also in the backend in a similar way to what we are doing in our frontend. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, the simplest way to do that is to take the JSON web token that we already have in our frontend signed by the Firebase authentication servers. We are going to take that JSON web token and we are going to send it to the backend attached to the HTTP request, which is initiating the create checkout session. When that request hits our backend, the first thing that we are going to do before executing any of the code of our endpoint is to check if there is a valid JSON web token attached to the request. If the JSON web token is correct, if the signature is correct, then we are going to make note of the identity of the user, attach it to the request and let the rest of the code execute. On the other hand, if this is an anonymous request or if this is from a user that is incorrectly authenticated with an invalid JSON web token, then none of the code of the create checkout session endpoint is going to get executed. We are going to send back to the client an HTTP error immediately and all of this functionality will not be executed. So that's how the design of our backend authentication solution is going to work. Now the key ingredient for this solution is the JSON web token that we need to attach to the create checkout request. We can grab the JSON web token here from the Angular Fire authentication service. Let's see how we are going to take this service and we are going to inject it into the main component of our application. So the login component is only reachable for logged out users. So here we cannot access it conveniently via the menu because we are already logged in. So let's go here to our front end and let's open the main component of our application, which is going to be the application.component.ts file. And here, conveniently, we already have the 
Angular Fire Authentication Service. Now, if we inspect the public API of this service, we are going to see that we get here an ID token observable, which emits string values. These strings that are getting emitted by this observable are the value of the JSON Web Token. Let's have a look at it. I'm going to simply log out to the console the value emitted by this observable and we're going to see what it looks like. Let's hit Command S, refresh our front end. We're going to switch here to a larger window and we're going to open our console. So after the application starts up, you are going to see a strange looking string printed out here to the console. If you copy the value of this string and you head over to a website called jwt.io, you are going to find here by scrolling down a nice JSON Web Token debugger. So we are going to paste in here the value of the string that we grabbed from our console and we are going to see that it has this JSON Web Token typical format of a series of characters separated by dots. And if you look here on the right hand side of our screen, we are going to see that indeed the payload of this token corresponds to a user profile. We can see here a URL to the user picture. So that's the picture that is used here in the top right corner of our application. And we also have here several other properties, including the user identifier property. Now, if we take this value of the user identifier property, we are going to see that this is the value that is available here in our authentication dashboard. So if I search here on this screen by this user ID, we are going to find it here as the only user in our user list. So as you can see, the JSON web token contains the user identifier that we need and it's signed already by the Firebase authentication servers. So all we have to do is to take this JSON web token and attach it to the HTTP request that gets sent to our backend whenever we click here on the buy course button. So that's what we're going to be doing in our next lesson. And then we are going to take the JSON web token in our backend and we're going to validate its signature and extract the user ID information from the request.